so it's recording and I'm Peggy Simmingson, literacy studies professor. And we also have, I'll just introduce everyone real quick for time, Brian Brown, our instructional or technology coordinator, for lack of a better word, data specialist at in College of Education. And we have a student, um, you teach science student, Shatara, and she's here to learn. And then we have Dana Owens, who teaches ed tech across the college, mostly online and literacy. And I teach 100% online. And we've got Andy Burning, who will join us in a minute. So yeah, we're ready to learn. We just want to hear about y'all's initiatives, what's going on at Capel High School. And if you could just tell us your names and titles, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Um, I'm Kayla Parker. I'm the associate principal. Um, so I'm over the curriculum and instruction here at Coppell High School. Yes, and my name is Brooke Sims, and I am one of a 12-member team of digital learning coaches that we have in Coppell ISD. Um, and this year, I have been assigned to serve um, Gladly CHS. And and I'm Kelly Stry. I'm a digital learning coach as well. Brooke and I partner here on this campus, um, and we're glad we're glad to be here. That's great. So, uh, what we usually do, like if we have uh, guests um, who, because we're an Apple, we were recently named an Apple Distinguished School, um, and so we like to flip a lot of our meetings or a lot of our tours so that they um, teachers or, or people who are visiting our campus can see uh, what we do. Uh, really on an ongoing basis and also um, what they see when they actually get here. So I want to share that with you, um, uh, Peggy, and get to you and then you can disseminate however. Um, and it's, like I said, it's what we send to all of the schools um, who come from across the world. I think we've got one from Canada, 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 Canada. coming. We got a school of, wow. we got 31 superintendents coming from Canada. Wow. So we're preparing for that. Um, <laughs> But we will be sending, uh, we send an, an iBook uh, put together of all of our different initiatives, <clears throat> all the different things that we do with technology. And we really just ask the question, um, uh, how does technology make the impossible possible in your learning environment? And so we ask that question and we have kids and teachers put together presentations and different things. So um, if we don't cover everything today or if there's still some questions out there, uh, like I said, all those that can be answered within that iBook that we'll send you. You can show everybody um, just some different things that we're doing on the campus. Um, <clears throat> I did notice in that I believe you have already spoken about blended learning and flipped learning. I think I was, I was trying to a kind of sift bit. it. Yeah, uh -huh. we've touched on it. How does that oh. work with y'all? Oh, so that's, well, and I'll let the ladies, um, those, they can speak on that as well. Um, actually, do y'all want to talk on the blended learning? We can. Sure. We can. Go for it. Uh, blended learning is offered through a variety of the core, uh, core classes here. And it's a learning environment where students learn partly through face-to-face -face instruction and through what we call our blended lab, where it's more independent learning or group collaboration um, within this, uh, this lab. It's a really cool concept where they are uh, discovering their own learning path. Um, there's lots of differentiated um, lessons within um, the lesson design that the educator has provided. Uh, the learners with. It's really neat. It's a great opportunity for learners to take control and own their own learning. So um, at CHS, um, I, it's been great. Um, mm -hmm. As far as I'm, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what I've seen, it's educators really pour a lot of their time into designing um, really interactive and um, mm -hmm. awesome lesson design. So, mm -hmm. and one thing that really calibrates us as far as it really doesn't matter what modality that we're teaching from. Um, we've adopted as a district the UBD methodology right. when designing for learning. Um, and so our district, even though it's been a part of our initiative for the past few years, I feel like we're really in a place now um, to where we're making some movement and really having some understanding of understanding by design. So regardless of if I am a flipped educator or a blended educator 
virtual educator or just a traditional classroom educator, we're all unified and aligned and calibrated in that we are starting with the end in mind um, and really setting our stage for our goals and for the kids to know what success looks like and what understanding looks like. And so as a team with our administrators and then digital learning coaches and general instructional coaches, we really tried to do um, a good job of marrying all of our jobs um, to where we're founded in good learning design, not really lesson plans anymore. We're designing for learning. Um, and so that really makes Kelly and I more effective as educators because we know that when we're coming in to integrate technology, that we are actually doing it for a purpose rather than choosing an app or a tool. Mm -hmm. um, the educators have already gone through stage one and stage two development of McTy and Wiggins work. So they know where they're going, which helps us gain focus for, for learning the learning plan in stage three. Mm -hmm. And we have, um, we do, we do the different, you know, blended models, of course, the 60, 40, 60 percent um, in the lab, 40 percent face to face. Um, but we also do uh, the station rotations. Um, so it really, it really just is about what is your campus um, needs, where your class, your course needs, um, and what model works best within the blended umbrella. So we have, um, you know, whether it's disruptive of innovation or just sustaining innovation, um, those were some of the, the questions we had to answer before we jumped into the blended, um, which we've started that four years ago um, here at the high school, and it's just it's just grown. We have a lot of uh, people come into our campus just to get more insight about blended learning, and um, we're actually putting together a big training um, right now for, for that, so there's a lot of neat things with that, um, and then flipped, of course, flipped learning fits within that umbrella of blended learning. So it's one that we use. Uh, we have a lot of teachers that use that. Um, we started with some of our um, upper level courses um, and now it's some of our on level um, courses. But really the key with that was just teaching the kids how to watch those videos and what is the accountability piece within that. So that was an important step that I think oftentimes is forgotten. Um, when we're talking about flipped um, and then I as a, an administrator um, I model that through flipping all of our staff meetings so um, your your normal traditional staff meetings are it's just about information and pushing that information out um, but we flip it and I work real close we us three live together pretty much <laughs> we're, we're, we're together all the time yeah yeah here actually um, so because instruction, you know, those, those cannot work in silos. And I think right. that that is when it gets confusing. Educators is when it's being produced, you know, um, articulated in silos of this is just technology, but instead of infusing that together. Um, so flipping the staff meetings has been something that um, we started this year and um, has been really just m modeling what we want to see in the classroom. Um, and I feel like that's been a pretty productive. I haven't given my checkpoint survey that's going out soon just to kind of see what, what that, but the feedback I get from that is, is very positive. Good. It's good use of time. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, another, go ahead. Well, um, another, big thing that we do, or at least a lot of people come to want to see our campus for, um, is really the curriculum writing piece. Um, so we curate, um, some of the courses will curate our own um, content uh, by using technology. So we'll use like an iMac um, and really just build build our textbook. Um, so of course you, say you have the standards, you know, the, the TEKS, but you also, um, we will pull resources from uh, New Zealand and um, have our classes, the kids will create their own learning textbook. So it, it never, it's just an, an ongoing, an ongoing thing. And we actually had one of our teachers, Jody Donheimer last year, she was named as an Apple Distinguished Educator for creating the book. And you can find this on iTunes U. Um, it's also in the thing that we'll send um, health Without Borders, um, she created that. And then her AP class also, she has um, um, curated also content, made their own textbook, and the kids are making it. So it, it's pretty neat to um, watch that all unfold. And that, that's kind of caught on throughout the school also, because mm -hmm. now we have our forensic science classes, our chemistry classes, aquatic they're science. all aquatic science. Yeah. 
we have all of our different classes are now wanting to do this because they see the benefits in it and what it's doing for their classroom. It's that ownership piece. Yeah, that's great. Like open education resources. Is that what that is kind of? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's the, probably the, the very most relevant performance assessment that I've seen mm -hmm. to date. Um, it's to wa watching those kids evaluate and justify and analyze all of the resources that are available to them because that's really our ultimate transfer goal for our learners. Um, is they have this multitude of resources available at their fingertips, but for, for us to teach them how to be um, evaluators and how to analyze and justify everything, they have to have true understanding of their content in order to do that um, and really evaluate the things that they're seeing because we do live in a world of those open resources now, but the biggest part is being able to um, decipher if they're they're valid or not right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so. quality and right credibility yeah okay great what else did was there anything else I know you have tons but um, we're looking forward to seeing that they is it an e ibook or an ebook kind of thing you're putting uh, together? We, yes yes we have an ibook um, uh, to send it's a uh, one that we're continued we, we just feel so every time a, a classroom puts that together uh, and like I said we'll send we'll get that sent to you um, we just had to add a few more in there because of um, our school from uh, Canada um, had requested to see some other pieces so we had to um, contact some of our teachers to get some more but um, we use, you know, the technology has really helped us also with like, um, and just infusing that by level in the playing field. We have one of our, um, our special ed classrooms. I mean, that, that's kind of, you know, that it's really cool to see what, what can technology do to really, you know, with, even with the assistive technology and the, you know, hearing and the, um, there's new tools out there for autistic kids and how, you know, or the nonverbal kids. Uh, so we're really utilizing a lot of those different um, resources. We had recently our STEM class that our invent team that invented um, a really neat thing for our active learning kids um, just on data collection. So um, our STEM kids worked with our uh, special ed department on creating this and it, it actually, it's in the iBook as well, but it actually um, uh, made the news. So it's, it's kind of a big deal. MIT, um, MIT, uh, contacted us as well and they're um, they're part of that initiative that's great so, I think of other things that were um, if, we if, have a lot of specific, yeah. oh, Andy. Yeah, go pardon ahead. me pardon my interruption but and I probably shouldn't say this because Kayla will I, I've become quite a pest to Kayla but <laughs> you, you really wow. have you really have to see this in action, their blended learning model, because it's real. It's one of the few districts I've seen. It's the only district I've seen that has a very mature blended learning model that's really, you know, it's just part of the day. And it, it's, um, it's, pretty, it's a pretty amazing model that they've built there at Capel High School. That's great. That's great. What do you use for the videos? Are they videos that the teachers create? or do they find them? And then what is that accountability piece you mentioned? Well, um, so like Dr. Burning was talking about, we've really been a district that's been, I think our district is unique in the fact that we really value autonomy. Right. And um, while we have systems and procedures in place, I feel like our leadership has really pushed us to go and try things and do the same things that we expect our kids to do. Try and try again. You may fail. You may it may not work at all, but then you may find something that really works for you. And from that has been the development of our blended model. Um, and I still think there are different hybrids of um, blended models throughout our district, but we're in, we're really in a great place with that. Um, and we have a learning management system that really supports our blended model as well. Um, just this year, we adopted Schoology district-wide. Um, and so it's available to K-12 learners, but we are um, school oh, Okay, Yeah, I've heard of it. I know what it is. Yeah, I just okay. couldn't hear very well. Previously, we've been a blackboard district. Um, so that's where all of our virtual courses and a 
lot of, regardless of if I'm blended flipped or traditional classroom, a lot of educators will curate their resources for blended type learning um, in, in LMS. But we have learned that this year through Schoology, um, it's really been so super user friendly um, that the educators do, most of them create their own that I've seen, and Kelly may speak differently, um, that I've seen have been original um, videos. And the reason that a lot of the educators have adopted that philosophy of creating their own original videos is that many of our educators value those relationship pieces and they know that that's a vital part of even a blended and virtual classroom. Um, and so, for instance, we have an IB um, math educator who's flipping, he also teaches on level um, courses, Ian Vandershee, and you'll see him in our iBook. Um, but he not only creates his own original flipped videos, but he also um, writes a blog where he curates his videos and then he has his own reflection on his teaching and his learners' reflection on what they learned from his class. Um, and furthermore, he goes on to show his personality even more by um, Hillcraft um, <laughs> comics that really um, just show his personality and showcase. So I would say the majority of educators that I've seen create their own original content. Um, and I think that also is attributed to our, our UBD methodology. Um, we just aren't a one size fits all campus and, uh, or district. A lot, of, a lot of things go into the blended. And I, I can tell you one of the, one of the um, greatest benefits because I've I've been in a low socioeconomic school district and now affluent I've also been elementary and now high school so kind of getting the spectrum and to see the different areas one of the greatest um, uses of blended learning is I mean you come you come you know you're the teacher and you all excited about you know day one and then you look at your roster and you say oh my god how am I going to do this like I have this many 504 kids, I've got SPED kids, I've got RTI kids, I have GT kids, I have, so I have like six different um, levels and different differentiation that I have to do within the classroom. So one of the greatest like selling models, if you will, marketing mm -hmm. models for uh, blended learning is, you know, how do I take all of that? Because that's our classroom. That's what it looks like now. You've got 30 kids sitting in there and you have six different uh, levels from GT and I mean I built the master schedule as an associate principal and we have 3,300 kids but the beautiful thing about um, being there yeah it's yeah I'm crazy um, but the beautiful thing about blended is that I know um, that I mean I can rest at night knowing that I'm scheduling it doesn't matter if it's a special needs student a learning disabled student versus and a GT kid I can put them into the same class in a blended learning and know that they are going to get the the quality education that they deserve. Um, a lot of the times we will tell teacher, teachers back in the old day, you know, we'd say, you teach to the middle, teach to the middle, those at the top, okay, whatever, those at the bottom will probably, gaps will, especially to the skill-based curriculum, will, you know, they may get left behind, but oh well, it doesn't hit you because it's just during that year, it'll catch up with them later. I mean, really, as sad as that sounds, that's kind of the mentality of some is let's just teach the middle. But we know that, I mean, the data will suggest that that will catch up with you. I mean, that, that catches up later on. It may not be you personally as a teacher, but when you run that data and historical data, you see where those gaps have formed. And it's because of that teacher that teaches in the middle. So what Blended does um, is while you have, and you have that really, the UBD, you have to really design the lesson. So it's a lot of front loading work mm -hmm. up front, but you have those um, kids who are in the, maybe a blended learning lab, who the GT kids or your kids who are wanting to excel in maybe that particular unit, who are in there working and, and getting that rich, you know, um, curriculum um, growing, you know, branching off doing that. And then the teacher is back in the classroom working individual or with a small group to, to scaffold that learning right. to where they need to be. So that to me is just, has been just such a, a wonderful, um, you know, it's, it's great. It's yeah. been great for um, what we've seen. And even the data suggests that that this model is working when it's, when it's implemented correctly. Um, 
it's not, I mean, like I said, it's a lot of front loaded work. You have to have a lot of professional learning that goes behind that. And you have to be ready for that challenge and that risk. Um, and you mess up a lot, but it's, it's neat to watch what's happening with this model. Well, can I add to that? Um, over the past few years, I was a blended educator. And so um, from my experience, when I had a broad spectrum of learners in the classroom, ranging from um, special ed to GT, you notice that those GT students loved getting to know those other students because they've been grouped with these GT kids their whole um, yeah. school you know, career. Um, but it brings those other lower performing kids up. And it also to me, made the GT learners aware that, hey, these, these guys bring great contributions to the team as well. And it just learned, they just learn how to work collaboratively, collaboratively, yeah. build people. Cool. So, you know, that's real world and applicable today. And, mm -hmm. you know, you got to learn to work with everybody, whether they're GT or not. So, mm -hmm. so build is real problem. Yeah. Takes a village, all of us. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, when we send you the iBook, I think you, you can yeah. even, I mean, we, we're talking a lot, um, but it really, you can't, you can't really imagine until you see it in action. It's pretty cool with the, the projects that the kids have put together. So I yeah, uh, will get that to you. That. Is yeah. that something we can share with other faculty? Yeah, okay. sure. Yeah, it's all around the world right now. <laughs> I, have, I have one question. How do your teachers share ideas with each other? Is it face to face? Do you have like a repository? Is there a, oh, you know, inf digital infrastructure you have? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Do y'all want to speak on that? Or I can I'm going to say it. we're a Google Apps for Education district. So a lot um, of what we do or curate is through our Google Drive. And a lot of the teams or our professional learning communities here on the campus share folders um, or unit lesson plans or even collaborate on one document. Even our learners do that as well. Um, but we use Google Drive quite a bit and docs and slides. Um, but we also, uh, once we've curated that content, it's on our learning management system, Schoology, and they're able to put their resources there and share with the educators uh, within our school and even um, globally, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. So we, we share a lot of our stuff globally and plan globally and with mm -hmm. our teachers um, they collect Google Docs. If we didn't have Google Docs, I don't, oh, I, I don't yeah, think we could. I, feel, I know. I don't think we could. I think survive. you can call it crowdsourcing. So a lot of what we do is, yeah. um, you know, crowdsourcing ideas and maybe answering questions through a collaborative Google Doc. So mm -hmm. 